Before we wrap up this Spring Boot quick demo, I would like to talk about this palm.xml file. It sits in the root directory of the Spring Boot project. As you can see, there are a lot of things in it, and this file looks daunting if you are not familiar with Apache Maven. Remember, a Spring Boot project is actually a Maven project. You don't have to understand everything in this file to work with Spring Boot, but I still want to talk about some elements in this file so that you know just enough to move on. If a problem occurs, at least you know where to look at. So, what is Palm? In a nutshell, the Palm or Project Object Model is the recipe that is used to build your Java project, or in our case, build your Spring Boot project. If you know Node.js and npm, palm.xml is similar to package.json. To be more specific, palm contains information about the project and the configuration details used by Maven to build the project. As I said before, a Spring Boot project is actually a Maven project. Spring Boot is using Maven as a tool to build the project and manage project dependencies. For your information, an alternative to Maven is Gradle. You can also use Gradle to build the project and manage project dependencies. Let's quickly step through this POM file and talk about some important elements. First, look at the root element of the POM file. Here is the open project tag and scroll down. This is the close project tag. The project element represents our Spring Boot Hello World project. The project tags enclose many important information. Model version must be set to 4.0.0. This is the Palm version. In other words, the version this Palm conforms to. It is not your project's version. The project version is on line 13. Don't confuse them. Then parent element defines the parent palm of this current palm. So palm can be inherited. We will discuss this parent palm later on. But for now, all you need to know is that the presence of this Spring Boot starter parent, this parent palm, indicates that this Maven project is a Spring Boot project. If we delete this element, This project is no longer a Spring Boot project. It is just a normal Maven project. So it is pretty important. Let me undo the delete. Save. You have seen the following elements when we first created this project in the Spring initializer wizard. And we set values to those elements. Group ID is a unique base name of the company or group that created this project. If I worked for Google, it would be com.google, a reversed domain name. Artifact ID is the name of the artifact. Under one group, there may be multiple artifacts, so we need to come up with a unique ID for each artifact within a group. Later on, we will develop a second artifact under the same group. And the artifact ID will be Hogwarts-Artifacts-Online. Version. 0.0.1-Snapshot means this version is still under heavy development. It is just a snapshot of the code at a given time. When the code is ready and it is time to release it, you will change the version listed in the palm. For example, instead of having a snapshot post fix, you would use a label like 
Let me undo the change. Save. A palm requires that its group ID, artifact ID, and a version be specified. These three values form the project's fully qualified artifact name. Together, they are called the coordinate of an artifact. You can give your project a name and a description. Then some properties, like the Java version Maven will be using to compile the project. Here, we're using JDK 17. The next important element is dependencies, which contains many dependency elements. Look at those dependencies. Do they ring a bell? Yes. We selected them when we first created this project in the Spring Initializer wizard. So if you forget to select one or want to get rid of an existing one, you can directly modify this POM file. For example, I can delete the first dependency and click here to refresh, load Maven changes. Now, of course, this is not good. Let me undo it because we need this dependency. So every time you add a dependency in, you have to click this load Maven changes to make sure Maven adds it. As you can see, each dependency needs at least two pieces of information. Actually, there should be three. The version is inherited from the parent palm I mentioned before. So no need to specify in this palm. Here, we have group ID, artifact ID, and a version which is inherited from the parent palm to uniquely identify the artifact we want, that our project depends on. There is another way to view the dependencies, that is through the right sidebar, right here, there is M, it is Maven. So click it. It shows a panel. Let's expand our project. As you can see, there is dependencies. Expand it. Here, it shows the three dependencies that our project depends on. Spring Boot Starter Web, Spring Boot DevTools, and Spring Boot Starter Test. And we can keep expanding them. Let's expand the first one. This means Spring Boot Starter Web depends on one, two, three, four, five, five dependencies. It depends on Spring Boot Starter, Spring Boot Starter JSON, Spring Boot Starter Tomcat. If you remember, we use Tomcat as our web server. It depends on Spring Web. It depends on Spring Web MVC. The last two dependencies are from the Spring Framework. Remember, Spring Boot is an extension of Spring Framework. So under the hood, it is still using the Spring Framework. So let's expand Web MVC. As you can see, Spring Web MVC depends on more projects like AOP, Beans, Context, Core, Expression, and Web. Now, this web and this web is the same. Since this is duplicate, Maven omits it. Recall that the Spring Beans and Spring Context are the basis for the Spring Framework's IOC container. The IOC container is really the core of the entire Spring family. This entire thing forms a dependency tree and is complex. But as a developer, I only need to tell Maven to bring in Spring Boot Starter Web. Maven will take care of bringing the entire dependency tree. As you can see here, duplicate dependencies will be omitted. Let me close this.
Once you specify those dependencies in palm.xml, Maven will use the internet to fetch those dependencies from a place called Maven2 Central Repository. Take a look at the external libraries here. You can see the downloaded artifacts. Let me scroll down and find Spring Boot Starter Web. It's right here. You may ask, where are those dependencies stored? They are stored locally on your computer. Let's try to find them. Let's go to Settings. You can search Maven here, but I want to show you how to find Maven. Under Build Execution Deployment, let's expand that. Let's click Build Tools, expand it. As you can see, IntelliJ supports Maven, Gradle, and Gaunt because Ant, A-N-T, used to be a very popular build tool. Maybe Gaunt is an extension of Ant. I don't know how to pronounce that. But let's focus on Maven. Click Maven. OK. After downloading the dependencies from Maven to Central Repository, Maven will save all the dependencies, the artifacts, in the local repository. So here is the default local repository. So let's go there and see all the downloaded dependencies. Copy. As you can see, there are a lot of directories. Since I used this computer for a while and worked on multiple projects, there are already many artifacts. Let's try to find our dependencies. Let me close this. Let's see if we can find the first dependency, Spring Boot Starter Web. It is under group org.springframework.boot. So scroll down. We're going to find org. Expand it. And under org, we're looking for Spring Framework. Right here. And then here is under boot. We're going to look for Spring Boot. Starter web right here. Now, here is interesting. There are actually different versions of Spring Boot Starter Web, starting from 1.3.0 and all the way to this one, 3.0.2, which is the one we're using. As you can see, the Spring Boot team changes the way they name their releases. They used to have release as the post fix. And after 2.3.4, they dropped this post fix. So now they just have 3.0.1 or 3.0.2. So this is the one we're currently using. But since I have used this computer for a while, Maven actually caches all those history versions. If you delete the .m2 directory, everything will be re-downloaded. Maven caches the downloaded artifacts, so it doesn't have to download the game. Many Maven projects on the same computer can share and reuse those artifacts. Let's go back to the palm file. Finally, there is a Spring Boot Maven plugin. 
This plugin provides Spring Boot support in Apache Maven. It allows you to package executable jar or war archives, run Spring Boot applications, generate build information, and start your Spring Boot application prior to running integration tests.